Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 155. My name is Jason Robertson. I am the owner of Outdoor Legacy, and we specialize in selling all kinds of night vision and thermal optics for hog and coyote hunters. Thanks for joining us again this week. As always, I've got my co-host, Hans, from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. Uh, what is going on tonight? Man, it is, uh, it's a good night. It's been a good past week since uh we we put out another show and i'm gonna tell you the hog uh, hog activity is uh heating back up seems like there's been quite a few hogs out running around lately uh still doing some coyote hunting but with the hogs being so busy now um kind of <laughs> kind of i was doing a bunch of coyote hunting and now the hogs are out so i've been doing a lot more hog hunting but i behind me if you're uh listening on on itunes you can check out the youtube video I've got my pulsar Thermion XP50 mounted on a Ruger Predator 6.5 Creedmoor bolt action rifle. And Jason, it is such a fun setup to shoot. You know, having that bolt action rifle um, just suits, shoots so smooth. And with a, a, a dead air Sandman TI suppressor, I mean, it takes so much recoil out of the shooting and sound. Uh, sounds great, but it's just a sweet shooting setup. I've been really excited about getting it uh, together here and I'm, i've just sighted in the rifle last week and got a shot got a chance to shoot a hog with it the same night and man it's just it's fun shooting it's fun shooting a bolt action rifle every now and then you know you and i we shoot obviously ars and ar pistols and stuff but strapping a thermal on a on a, a bolt action rifle is just I don't know. It just feels something nostalgic about it. About it, it is. It's a different. Yeah, you're taking taking the old and, and yeah. bringing in the new. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I bought. So you know, this is <laughs> this has nothing to do with the show, but we're going to be talking about five <laughs> five life hacks for hog hunting or five hog hunting life hacks. So some tricks and things that that Jason and I do when we're we're hunting and trying to be more successful at hunting. And a lot of people have asked. Uh, some some of the things that we do so we're going to give give our secrets out but but anyway i bought this uh ruger predator 65 creedmoor i wanted just something i could carry around that was the one thing about bolt action rifles that was difficult for me is they're usually at least 20 inches long they're not easy to carry um they're heavy bulky all that stuff well I bought this rifle and cut it down from a 20 inch barrel down to a 16 inch barrel. So it's a 16 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. A Ruger Predator. It's one of my favorite bolt action rifles because it comes with a one piece uh, Picatinny rail on top, uh, standard, and it comes standard with threaded barrel. So, I mean, two things that are must for me that it comes with with a bolt action rifle. But they don't make it in a 6.5 Creedmoor. And I wanted that caliber. I mean, it's just, I love the caliber. Love to coyote hunt with it. Love to hog hunt with it. Um, but they, Ruger Predator, they didn't make it in a uh, a short barrel rifle like that. So I took it to a buddy of mine, uh, Class 3 Machining. Uh, if you look for him on Instagram, he said, yep, I'll hook you up, bring it over. So he thread, um, cut the barrel down, re-threaded it for me. <laughs> and now I've got what's, you know, is pretty cool. It's a modified, one-of-kind, unique rifle, and it's perfect for... Uh, night hunting is perfect for coyote hunting, hog hunting, and easy to carry. So it's kind of the the best of both worlds. You can tell how I'm excited I, I am about it. I'm sitting here. Uh, you <laughs> are excited. I didn't even up. know you had any Creedmoor ammo anymore. I thought you were you were everything all in on Grendel, but you must have been I, holding yeah. out some Creedmoor ammo there under your under your bed. We could do a whole. You know, Jason, you and I could do a whole another show about finding oh, ammo because. That, along with scope questions, is one of the most uh, frequent questions that I get asked. How are you finding ammo? I mean, when we talk to people on the phone, they're asking about scopes, and it's like, hey, one more question before you, before I let you off the phone. How are you finding ammo? Where are you going to find ammo? <laughs> um, there's we don't have any tricks for you <laughs> to tell you the truth. Well, we 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 have a we have a trick. Well, it's a good buddy. <laughs> we, we've, we've, yeah, Jason it, it, recently found a source, uh, a buddy of his that has been helping us out a lot. And I'm gonna tell you, this guy has come in clutch for us finding ammo. But he, he has. And I'm we, gonna be clear before you start calling me. Yeah. He's just a dude buying retail, okay? So he's not he's not wholesaling this. No. I can't help you. I mean, he has just gone to work and he, and let me just, it has been uh, feet 
on the pavement yeah. for this guy. Yeah. He has literally been going to stores and uh, just just getting his ammo in an area where there seems to be more ammo than there is where. I'm oh yeah, at. and and a great guy, a good friend of yours. Um, yeah. This is not a. I guess it is kind of a special deal that we have with him, but it's not like a lot of people think because of what we do that we have special ammo sources and deals and we're getting all this. We, we, we did when it was on the shelf. We did. Yeah. We could walk <laughs> I could buy it wholesale then. Exactly. Yeah. We have wholesale accounts and yeah, uh, yeah. those wholesale accounts. Now it's the same people selling to the gun shops yeah. the, and, and I'm way down the list from those <laughs> gun shops. Cause I'm not, I'm not trying to buy it cause I don't do it for a living. I want those guys to, yeah. to get their ammo and, and feed their family as, you know, trying to, to sell it. But yeah, we don't have any, any special, uh, tricks other than just yeah pound the pavement i guess yeah. it's it's and, tough and, and i'm gonna i'll give hang on i'm gonna give you my life hack okay han <laughs> says this show is going to be the five hog hunting life hacks here is my life hack for ammo search for it and when you find it and you and it's a decent price okay forget what it cost two <laughs> yeah, years ago that's exactly. not coming back when you find it and you can buy in bulk yeah buy it yeah I mean, I found a deal the other day, 1,000 rounds of 9 millimeter ammo, that it's not a screaming deal. It's a fair deal. Boom. I got on there, 1,000 rounds, bought it. I mean, just don't, you can't think about it because if you wait, it's going to be gone. And then you're yeah. going to wish that you could have got it at that price. So that's, there's my, my tip. My life hack is when you find it, buy it and buy all you can afford to get and then just yeah. forget about it because yeah, you're, you're going to want it. And you're going to wish right. you bought it. You're, you're right. If you can find it, buy it. I know it's hard to, for Grendel, you know, you've been seeing it $40. I, I mean, I'm sorry, $4 around for some places at Grendel ammo, which is just stupid. Um, but, uh, but I, you know, one thing that that I was fortunate in doing, I was buying it, you know, buying Grendel ammo and Creedmoor ammo, but more Grendel um, about a year ago. Anytime I saw it on the shelf, I'd buy as much as I could, and mm -hmm. so I had already had a pretty good stock. And then, and and Jason, you were my source for ammo, like you said, because we had, you know, you had a uh, uh, set up, uh, you know, through some distributors yeah, I got and sell accounts, and, yeah. And you ran dry, so that meant my source <laughs> ran dry. So here am I right. out pounding the street, you know, just like everybody else. But, you know, hey, that's kind of uh, – well, we're not doing anything different than what everybody else out there is doing, but we right. do have a guy that has been – helping us in another area that obviously Grendel yeah. is not as popular <laughs> where he exactly. lives because well, he's been able I, to find would, it. Yeah. And I'll say one thing and, and we could really, we could do a whole show talking about this and I don't think this is going to get better anytime soon. And I'm not suggesting that people go out and pay $4 around for Grendel ammo. We may all be there one day. I hope not. Mm, but uh, I think that there is a, a new normal uh, of kind of what, what stuff is worth today. And um, I think you've got to, you got to be willing to, to jump on it. And uh, this is the thing that I, I know Hans and I have found over and over. Uh, last August, I remember this because I was on vacation and uh, you had, had sent me a link or something to some, to, to some Grendel ammo, like the, those, uh, just being the good uh, friend that I am, you know, just the good out for friend you. that you yeah. are. They were like that, those, uh, Hornady boat tail hollow uh -huh. point, 200 round ammo can cases of it. And I remember we bought some of this stuff and I think I bought like maybe two or three cases of it. It's like 600 rounds. And I remember like thinking, man, I ought to buy more. And it wasn't, it was just, it really, it was normal prices for then, which were already well, getting a little bit higher. Yeah. Cause okay? I remember it was like, well, one ammo can I bought was 250 bucks. I remember thinking, I'm like, man, that's kind of expensive, but you know, yeah, but right. 250 I, bucks for 200 rounds. 250, seems like a yeah. Deal. Now of Hornady. <laughs> yeah. So, but I remember buying two or three cans of this and saying, I want to thought buy more. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is a little more, you know, this is a little more than I should be paying. Right. And every time I do something like that, I look back and I go, dad, Gum it! I wish I could go back and I'd buy five thousand right. rounds at that price. So right. yeah, it's it's crazy. All right, well, people are tired of hearing us cry about ammo. I don't think they are because I think they're sitting there trying to take notes because everybody out there right now is fine, trying to find ammo and it is. no matter 
I'll tell you what, if you shoot a two two four Valkyrie, you can find ammo all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. I think I'm just everywhere. gonna go build me a two two four Valkyrie just because I know I can find ammo. Yeah, exactly. That you or shoot seven, turtles with it. <laughs> yeah, that or seven six two by thirty nine. I mean, that's still um I've been able to find that on the shelf at some sporting goods stores. But anyway, we are gonna get into the five hog hunting life hacks. Uh and these are uh Things that Jason and I have done. Now, if you've listened to this show, gosh, from the very beginning and and a pre-congratulations, Jason, uh, next week's show will be exactly three years. But if you've Uh, listened, get that far. uh, And there's a lot of people out there that have. If you listen the last three years, you probably will hear a lot of things on this list because we are. uh, These aren't just things that we just started doing a month ago. Uh, These are things that we do that we've always done, and it we feel like it's given us an edge. you know, not to say that uh, there's not a lot of luck involved in hunting <laughs> and just kind of being in the right spot at the right time. But these little these tricks will help you be more successful and increase your odds of being lucky because luck is nothing more than just preparation and, and opportunity. So with that being said, um, we're going to kick off and go to the first one. And Jason, this is this first this life hack, Jason. Back. What's that? I said, this goes way back. It does, because this is something that you kind of uh, got me on. And also, uh, you did uh, murder one of one of my things that you're about to describe. <laughs> I'll let you tell a story, and then we can go on to the details. But yes. Uh, I forgot about yeah. that. Okay. So, pig pipes. Yeah. Pig pipes. Pig pipes. We yeah. did a whole show about this way back. It, it had to be in our first, you know... I don't know, 15, 20 shows. It seems like it. I know it was way, way back when we first started yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole show on pig pipes. And so if you're really, really interested, uh, you can go back and, and, and find that show. What a pig pipe is, I'm going to just explain it generally, is a piece of four-inch PVC pipe uh, that can be of varying length, anywhere from three, four I know some people are doing yeah. five foot. I, mean, I do. That's pretty long, I do about four. I would say four I, to six feet. But yeah, I do mine at four feet. So four four inch, uh, four, four inches around and and four foot long you, is usually what I do. Yeah, and that's right. And you want this? You want that the heavy wall PVC pipe, yeah. and don't get like the little thin sewer mm, pipe. Yeah, get the the heavy wall PVC pipe, and you I, I four foot's logical because you got an eight foot piece of pipe. All yeah. right, that just makes the most sense. Cut it off. Yeah, and. You're going to basically buy the uh, one end is going to be a solid cap. All right. You're going to put that over that end. The other end, you're going to want to buy a, uh, a threaded adapter. So you're going to slip over the piece with the female threads and then buy the, the male threads that go on, uh, you know, that, that thread into there. Uh, and then on the, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's one perfect way. I think you can go stand at, at the hardware store and figure out what, are, what, what will work best for you. Yeah. But you want to put some sort of an eye mm-hmm. in the solid capped in that doesn't have the, you know, not the screw on the glued on piece. Yeah. And you're going to have that eye there. And ideally, if if that eye is solid and doesn't spin because you put the nuts on the back, then you need to have a, a clip, you know, one of those little, I don't know what you call it, but, you know, those little metal clips that goes in there, something that's got a swivel and yeah. spins, yeah. okay? And then, you know, again, there's all kinds of opinions on how long you want this to be. You can do anywhere short from, you know, 12 inches out to about two foot of chain Mm -hmm. or cable, steel cable. And then you want to go to something driven into the ground. Like I know some guys will cut off a T post and drive that down, uh, some kind of a stake, Mm -hmm. rebar, whatever it is. I've used um, augers. You can take those augers that are like, you know, 16 inches Mm -hmm. and put like a, a, you know, a broom handle or shovel handle and, and screw them down if the ground is either not too hard or not too soft. It's got to be enough that it'll yeah. hold it in there. Yeah. And then again, so you got something that you got in the ground, but you want to have another swivel ring there. And what happens is you take this pipe and you drill holes in it. And Hans, I don't remember the size of those holes. Uh, we had that down at one yeah. point. And I know there's some differing opinions on that. To be honest, 
I'm I'm the kind of guy that I just play with it. Uh, yeah. I just drill. I start small, mm -hmm. and, and then work my way up. You don't want to get the holes too big. I don't drill that many either. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, you know, one on this side, roll it over, uh, you know, a quarter, and then two down here, and then roll it over one here. So, you know, four to five holes is probably mm -hmm. plenty. Again, play with this. You know, yeah. see what works best for you. And, do, and I say to try this on concrete, on a slab or, or something so that you can see. And you put corn in this. And as you roll it around, some corn will yeah. come out. And for those that don't understand, you know, you're going, okay, I have no idea what you do with this thing. You put it out there, the hogs find it, and they have to work to get it. So hogs, you know, use their nose to root and move things. They will move this and corn will dribble out. Yeah. And then they will start rolling it. Well, they end up rolling it in a circle. That's where these swivels come in. Because if you just chain this thing up, they're going to get this thing tied up in a knot and then they're going to have leverage and they're going to break something off because mm -hmm. a, a hog, they are not going to stop until something breaks. No. I mean, they're going to push and push. So you, again, you want this thing freely spinning on the ground where they can go in a circle. One thing that uh, I've had a lot of guys say is that, you know, well, it's not putting out enough corn. And that's the fine, fine line of how much corn you want coming out. It's got to be enough to interest the hog that he yeah. finds it. He can't roll it four times and one piece of corn come out. But if he rolls this thing, you know, one revolution and it put out four pounds of corn, he's going to be done in two revolutions. Yeah, yeah. So you need him to be able to work this thing for a long time. So I, I do remember off the top of my head, uh, the size holes that I use are three eighths of an inch. And I do about I four holes right. through this whole thing on different mm -hmm. sides when it rolls. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the point? The point is to, um, first of all, keep the hogs interested long enough that they're going to stay at this bait hole that you have for a long period of time. You know, right. so they're not just gobbling up corn and and being gone real quick. Uh, the second thing is is to not just make it harder for the hogs to get the corn out, but it also um, makes it harder for everything to get the corn out. So right. if you just throw corn out on the ground, birds are going to get it, squirrels, uh, raccoons, deer, everything. Um, but if you put the corn in a in a, a pig pipe, what we call a pig pipe, it makes it that corn uh, will that corn in that uh, in the pig pipe will last a lot longer than just throwing it out and on the ground or or doing anything like that. So it, it, this is great for bait holes that you have that you can't go to every day or every other day to fill up, you know, to throw out corn. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you're not using deer feeders or anything like that, right. uh, this is, a, uh, if you, and I will say this, if you're looking for ways to make a pig pipe, I actually made a video with my daughter, with my youngest daughter on the I Hans, e about yeah, that. on the Hans e e ETX YouTube channel, just search Hans ETX on YouTube, how to make a pig pipe. And the video will pop up. I, her and I made uh, a, a few of them that day, but we went through I the whole. I forgot all about yeah. that. Those were good videos. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So we the whole instructions on exactly how to do it, we we did that. And that video seems like a very, very long time ago, um, but it was probably just a couple years ago. But yeah, go check that out. That's the pig pipes. I will tell you this. Why, why we thought that this was a life hack um, is because... Any bait hole or bait spot that I have has a pig pipe on it. There, the mm -hmm. no question. There's no. I mean, yeah. I always put a pig pipe on any property that I have that I'm trying to bring hogs in. So uh, that we felt, hey, we felt it important enough that we put it as number one. So yeah, uh, and 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 I want to say a couple of quick things about it, and we'll be done on the pig pipe. You know, like I said, Hans has got that video that with his daughter. Forgot about that, and then uh, I know we have a whole show about it. But they are the places that I really, really use them. And I mean, I'm like, I'm like Hans. If I've got, if I've got, if I'm trying to feed hogs in a place that I'm hunting, I've got a pig pipe on it. And what I like about it is a lot of the places that I'm hunting, they may be remote. They may be way back in the woods, back in a clearing and a log set or an opening or in the back of a pasture somewhere that I don't want to have to go down to and dump out corn every other day. Mm -hmm. This is something that I can do. And hopefully, depending on, you know, how big the pipe is and all these different things, 
it might last a week, might last two weeks, it might last three days, but no matter what, it's longer than if I dumped it on the ground. Yeah. And yeah. even the coons. So I have to admit, I've got some coons that have college degrees. <laughs> And I've got, I've got some cameras on these things. And I figured out that these coons were actually like recruiting other coons. It started as like one, two, there's like four coons and they are standing in a line and they would push this thing in circles. They would stop. And then you get like pictures of them eating. And then here they go again, like teamwork all on three. And they'll push that thing around. But the, as bad as I hate those little suckers, if you'd have poured it on the ground, that it just stayed there till it was gone. Oh, yeah. This at least There's takes no them several nights. Now I'm going to say one last thing about this. Um, I know some guys that told me, and I'm not going to tell you not to do this, but I'm going to tell you why I don't. Um, this sounds like a good trick, but I don't believe that it is. They take on the uh, the end where the cap is permanently glued on, and when they're building it, they put a a, a compartment in there okay so you've got this this dead space where corn can't go and they put gravel in there and so it's got the sound like the corn has and that's the hogs like that they hear it they're hearing that something's happening and you know they're pushing and something's falling out and they keep hearing it rolling yeah. and so one of the theories is is that you put these rocks down in this compartment and they make that sound. So even when it's empty, they'll continue to push Man. it and, you know, whatever. Well, That's here's my deep. thought That's on way it. Deep into it, it is way deep. It is. But I, I try to take it to the next level because hogs are smart. And in my opinion, you're teaching that hog to not push this mm. because he's not. He's hearing it, but he's not getting any reward for it. Right. And he does that enough times then he's going to get bored with it. Yeah. And so I don't like the idea personally. Right. I know there's going to be some guys that, that leave comments, they know it works great, and they may have a third level of thinking on why it does. But, uh, I mean, I really contemplated it at one point. But I was like, no, I, I'm, I'm teaching the hog when he hears that and he keeps pushing it, but he's not getting rewarded. Right. And so, you know, you want him to hear that sound, the corn fall out, and he gets the reward. So yep. anyway, that's my two cents. Yep, pig pipes. So pig pipes are awesome. Um, you're right. Uh, the coons will come after them. They'll roll that thing. Deer will, will, will roll it. I've had cows roll pig pipes. So, I mean, animals are smart. They'll figure it out. But the hogs will come after it, and they'll stay interested. So the second, and this kind of goes along the same lines as uh, – as the, the baiting hog baiting, but, um, anybody knows me knows that I'm a big fan of souring corn. Now I like to sour corn for a couple different reasons. Um, first of all, it's, uh, it's a less expensive way to bait for hogs and not have to go out and buy expensive hog baits, which, um, hog baits are expensive. They don't last very long. There's some very good ones out there, but they just don't last long at all. So with baiting hogs, you can, Mix up a bunch of soured corn, smelly, good smelling corn. Um, it'll last a long time. So what I do, uh, it, how to make it first, and I also have probably a, several videos on YouTube, but um, on YouTube, on my on YouTube channel, there's uh, how to make hog bait or something like that. But I'm going to give you the ingredients here. So I've got them right here. I'm showing them on camera if you're listening on audio only. But uh, you put it, this is a two liter yeah, this is a two liter bottle of just cheap strawberry soda. Uh, so the first thing you do, get a five gallon bucket, fill it up about three quarters of the way uh, with just deer corn, dried deer corn. Uh, you're going to put two liters of strawberry soda. You're going to put two boxes of just cheap, um, this is powdered strawberry uh, jello. Pour two boxes of those in there. And then this yeast, uh, I pour which is actually three packages, but it's, it comes together as one package of this instant rise yeast. I just throw all that in a five gallon bucket. I fill the rest of it with water. You let it sit there, especially in the summer. It won't take that long to sour. Uh, it'll sour, ferment, start to get stinky and smelly. Um, but that will, that is the scent that I use Jason, um, to pour over the pig pipe to give it that smell to start attracting, mm -hmm pigs to it from a long area away. So 
I fill mm. the pig pipe up with dry deer corn. I mix up this sour corn and I'll just take that sour corn and I'll just pour it along the top of that pig pipe just for the scent. Uh, all it takes yeah. is a week of just sitting in that bucket. And again, two liters of cheap strawberry soda, uh, two packages of strawberry powdered jello, and a, uh, a package of instant rice yeast. Throw it all in the bucket, fill the rest of it with water, let it sit for a week. You get a lid, poke a couple holes in the top of the lid to let it vent out. Uh, in the summertime, it doesn't take that long to sour. It'll get stinky and it'll smell really bad, uh, but it will attract hogs. And um, and I use it like I said. You pour it. What you do is you get that you get that juice that's that soured corn mm. juice mm. and all the corn. And in the summer, when you pour it on that pig pipe, that juice and that soured corn on top of that pig pipe, the sun actually bakes it into the plastic of the pipe (laughs) it is it'll never wash you couldn't pressure wash that yes (laughs) and so it i mean it lasts in a bucket of corn sour corn will last a very very long time a very long time and a lot of you Mm. may have you know powders that you throw out which are good i mean those are good those are expensive but they're good or you may have like a syrup squirt that comes in a bottle uh again those work pretty well but you're paying you know, eight dollars to ten dollars for a bottle that'll last you right. just a few, uh, you know, three or four applications. This one will last you, you know, more than triple that as far as applications, and it costs about three dollars, four dollars to make. So half the price, maybe even more than half half the price. Uh, but it's a great thing, and and I've I've used it ever since I've been doing it. Uh, you know, this recipe was given to me by an old East Texas farmer. <laughs> so uh, I've used it ever since. I, I want to mention something that you said there that I think is key. And I'm going to tell you how I, I know this is important <laughs> from user error. Han said, put dry deer corn mm-hmm. in the pig pipe. Do not pour no. soured corn no. in the pig pipe. I can tell you <laughs> why it doesn't work right. because it gets in there and you've got it in this you know, I say sealed up, it's got some holes, but it's basically sealed in there for the most part. Uh, it's gets super wet and humid and hot in there. That stuff is continuing oh, yeah. to cook. And then it just Gums like, it up. starts sticking together, coagulating. Yeah, you can't beat it out of there. It's right. nasty. It won't fall out because it's sticky and, and it's expanding as it sours. It's blowing up. Oh, yeah. So, Put dry deer corn yep. in that, not the soured corn. Right. And I, I know that, that, look, you don't have to use the pig pipe. Soured corn works great. It's mm-hmm. all we used to do. But what we've got at our place uh, here on my property is we have more deer than ever. And the deer will eat any corn we put out. Yeah. I don't care if you put diesel on it. That's one of the old tricks yeah. is pour diesel on it, uh, sour it, do whatever. Our deer will eat it. Yeah. I mean, they'll just stand there until it's gone. And so we've got to do something to 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 keep them from getting in it. And that's where the pig pipes come mm-hmm. back in. I, I mean, Hans has got a deal where we've talked about again before. He goes out there. He's got sandy or soil. He'll just dig a big post hole, pour that corn in there, mm-hmm. and that soured corn, make those hogs root for it. And that works great mm-hmm. unless you've got a bunch of deer. you got a bunch of deer, they're just going to come camp out yeah. on top of that and eat it as well. Right. Yeah. So, okay. All right. so, so we need to next, move along. Yeah, yeah. We, we we're, are, we're, gonna, we're, we're getting happy with we're, the stories We're going to run out of time. Yeah. Um, all right. But the, so, so number three of the life hack, and yeah. I'll go ahead and introduce it formally, is uh, Jason wants to t- talk about uh, the satchel that he carries. So, now, gosh, this is why you shouldn't <laughs> be allowed to introduce anything. The satchel. It's a European man purse. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, he does so, not carry a satchel. He carries. This is a manly man's man bag, hunting bag. That's right. Yeah. It's, I it, carry one it's, too, it's, so you know I it's can't o, it's OD green and it's tactical and it's <laughs> yeah. got Molly attached. It's got, a, all it's over got it. a, a, a Velcro Texas flag on it, so there's nothing. That's right. You know, feminine That's about right. that. It's got all. a yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, so we do need to move along, but I want to talk about this, and I think uh, this is probably going to be the one where um, we we maybe spend a little more time uh, more than the next two. 
One thing I found is hunting with other guys is very common. And again, guys that don't hunt all the time, or maybe you're newer at it, you go, hey, you know, get out of the truck. You ready to go? Yeah. You got everything? Yeah. You got your rifle? You got your tripod? Yep. You know, you got your magazine? Yeah, we're good to go. And you take off and you go hiking, stalking, walking Mm -hmm. on the, you know, ranger or the mule, the side by side, whatever it is. And you get out there and they go, oh man. I forgot X, Y, Z in the truck. And it's like, you don't have another one. You don't have a spare. You don't. So a big deal for me, I don't care if I'm, you know, driving all the way up to Hans's place two hours and I'm going to spend the night and we're going to go hunting. Well, granted, number one, I'm going to take enough stuff that we could, you know, fight an invasion of the Taliban. (laughs) And uh, I don't know why I load up everything I own. (laughs) He brings more magazines and ammo than I think we have hogs in the whole county. I'm I'm just getting, yeah, I'm I'm optimistic. Okay. I've got every kind of bag and rifle case and I don't know. Man owns more more tactical backpacks than, than an army (laughs) Navy store. I'm pretty sure. It's true. I can't, I'm not going to deny any of that it's true so but but i do carry a bag with me i don't care if i'm going to hans's i don't care if i'm going over uh hunting with a buddy or if i'm walking out literally off my back porch 150 200 yards to shoot a hog down there in my pasture i am going to carry a bag with me and I'm just going to, I'm not going to go over every single thing in the bag because we are pressed for time, but I'm just going to tell you some of the things that are in there and they need to be, you need to carry this bag and it needs to be in there for you. Number one, a spare magazine that's loaded. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I can just tell you there's going to be some time that you're going to be glad that you've got that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always something if you're, if you change calibers, you need to be very conscious of that. Okay, if you're shooting a 6.5 Grindel and a 300 Blackout and a 223, whatever, you need to be conscious right. of what magazines are in there. So just anyway, That's you, you know, be Very super advice, careful yeah. there. Yeah, because you're going to be in the dark when you're down there fumbling around for that magazine. Mm-hmm. I carry a spare magazine. I carry a handheld flashlight. I carry a headlamp. I carry a pair of, uh, you know, surgical gloves. Uh, just in case I need to, you know, drag something off or whatever. If I'm gonna, uh, if I'm gonna uh, clean something, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I carry if it's winter time. I'm, you know, I'm gonna have an extra a pair of, you know, gloves for my hands. Uh, I will carry. Uh, well, there's several things. Uh, at one point, um, I would always carry, and I do. I'll keep a spare set of just like the foam earplugs in there. Uh, at one point I had some of those really nice mm-hmm. little, you know, electronic, uh, sound dampening, whatever they're called, yeah. Walker game ear deals. I had some of those at one point, but, but carry those, you know, Hans and I are shooting suppressed when we're in the field. Mm-hmm. We don't wear hearing protection. If I'm on the bench, I will, but you never know. You may be hunting with somebody who doesn't have a suppressor and you know, you need to be conscious of your ears, but, uh, having that basic set of stuff in there is extremely handy. We, we carry camera gear with us, so we're going to carry a camera in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to carry uh, spare batteries. So depending on what optic I'm using, it might be using CR123As. I'm always going to have two or three extra batteries, CR123As in there. My flashlight uses those as well. Um, my monocular. I'm going to have that. Usually I will store that in the bag. Right. Um, I know it sounds like you're going, man, that's a lot of stuff. It's not that much. It's to me, these are the necessities. Every single thing I've mentioned, uh, I'm going to use on a normal basis. Mm-hmm. Not like this isn't like the, the thing you got in there that, you know, in the blue moon you might use. And so Hans, I don't know if you carry anything yeah. different than that. I know you've got a big bag as well. Yeah, I carry a big backpack. Um, uh, everything that you mentioned, I think, is perfect. The only thing that I carry uh, also is I got one. Oh, man, drop this whole thing. Uh, the Convergent Bullet HP, the hog collar. So yeah. I keep that in my backpack because if I stalk up on a hog and I get out there several hundred yards away, and by the time I get there, they're gone. I'll throw this collar out, and so I can try to call them back into me. Um, or coyotes because you can call coyotes with it too but that's the only thing different that i carry in my backpack and um 
you know, but everything else that you talked about, flashlights are a big thing, magazines. Uh, and I think that that's uh, really good advice because you're right. Most of the hogs you shoot are right off your back porch or, you know, you're walking 200 yards off your back porch, but you're still carrying a bag uh, no matter Absolutely. what. And I'm, and I'm the same way I carry, sometimes I carry two bags with me. I've got so much yeah. junk with camera the, equipment and the, all that kind of stuff. But. The, the only other thing that I would advise you put in there, um, if you're carrying a big enough bag is a first aid kit. And I have carried, I've got some really nice, smaller first aid kits. They're, you know, I don't know, probably six inches by six inches and maybe three inches thick. Yeah. My small bag, I don't really have room for one of them. I carry them in my bigger bag. I mean, that'd be something that, right. you know, that's what the once in the blue moon, you hope you don't need it, but you'll be glad you do if, yep. if or glad you got it if you do need it. But yeah. So, uh, so just quick All rundown. Right. Yeah. Number one is pig pipe. Number two, sour and corn. Number three, it's carry a bag. Uh, number four is texting game cameras. Man, this has mm -hmm. changed everything about the way I hunt it in has. the last several years. Um, you know, and I will say the availability of texting game cameras, the affordability, all that has just gotten great. Uh, a lot of people ask what cameras I use. Um, I use the spy point game cameras right now. Uh, I've got three of those. I've got two of the mool trees. Um, both are good. The spy points are a little less expensive on the monthly plans, uh, and on the actual cost of the camera itself. So a spy point camera you can get, uh, typically on sale quite often for around a hundred bucks. And, uh, it'll cost you about 10 to $15 per month for a subscription, uh, to be able to have the camera. What it does obviously is takes pictures out in the field when a hog or whenever an animal pops up and then it sends it to an app on your phone. And so I've got three cameras. So that those three cameras are tied to that, that spy point app. And, uh, man, I tell you, uh, that has helped me kill a bunch of hogs, not just because I can see it on camera and run over there and shoot one or two really quick, but it helps me pattern the hogs and let me know what's in the area. It saves me a lot of time because I don't have to go and pull cards from cameras and look through hundreds and hundreds of, you know, crow and <laughs> deer photos you know to see when the hogs are coming uh but it's that alone is probably one of the biggest things that has led me uh, to be able to shoot a lot of hogs and i move those cameras around quite often different properties different spots different you know uh, bait setups with the pig pipes and the siren corn and i know you use texting game cameras um you know there's a lot of different brands out there that that you can use now uh but you know the spy points have been They've worked good. They're not very expensive. And, you know, if it messes up or breaks, I've had one actually break and the customer service was excellent. So they sent me another yeah. one right away. But texting game cameras works good. Yeah, if and you I can do say, it, I would definitely do it. Yeah, I, I agree. And yeah, I'm using the Spartans. They're expensive. Mm -hmm. I think there's I think there's much, you know, less expensive options than that out there now. Uh when I started using these things, they were really popular and they're, you know, pretty fairly priced i do think there's some more affordable options i've got a couple of those i really like but i think what hans was was saying there uh is very important if if i've got a regular you know camera that's taking pictures and putting on an sd card that means i've got to go all the way out there and i've got to pull that card mm -hmm. to see what happened you know yesterday the day before the day before mm -hmm. but if i'm sitting at home and i'm going Hey, there's hogs there and it's 11 o'clock at night and tomorrow night. Hey, there's hogs there and it's 1045 at night. You know, three nights in a row, I know. I don't have to go out there to look to see, to guess what I'm going to do tomorrow. I mean, I'm getting that live information. And so it's very, very helpful. Yeah, so yeah, definitely text and, and, and mine actually email it to me, but email, text and same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten very affordable uh, from what they used to be. And uh, my last bit of advice on that, if you go put one of those things out somewhere, do not put that thing on like five seconds because <laughs> you will blow your phone yeah. up getting yeah. text and emails and it'll just kill you. Yeah. You need to set that thing at, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It depends on what you want, but I'll set them anywhere from a minute to three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes five, because all I want to know is that they're there. Yeah. I don't care past that. It's not like I'm trying to get a picture of that big buck. Exactly. That's a little bit different. Exactly. So right. check out so, check uh, check out the texting game cameras if you're wanting to pattern hogs and get a good idea. And to make your hunts more successful, if you have property that you can put out cameras on, I'd, I'd highly and strongly suggest doing so. So the last one. Yeah. 
This okay. one is this one are uh, is for people um, that don't get to hunt that often, but they want to come down where a lot of people come to Texas. They want to hunt hogs and they want to get some meat. But hog hunting is a very uh, fast paced sport because it is shoot mm-hmm. a bunch of hogs and go on to the next spot. How can people right. quickly get some meat off of a hog, throw it in a cooler, and then get on to the next hunt? And I'm going to leave that to Jason because right, this so- man will butcher anything. So. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this quick because we are out of time. I'm going to explain this the best way I can. If you're if you're wanting to just get some meat, get some of the best meat, and get it quick, uh, you, uh, this is not dragging the thing back up, putting it on the side by side, hauling it back to the barn, you know, uh, hanging it up and skinning it out and butchering it. Okay, that's a real butchering job. You can butcher that just like a deer. Uh, You don't need me to tell you how to do that for the most part. But what this is, this is the down and dirty way to do it in the field. And all you need uh, is a really sharp knife. I advise some rubber gloves because you're probably not going to have anything to wash your hands with. And a, uh, you know, a big Ziploc bag, a couple big Ziplocs. Or, you know, if you've got a cooler, you're going to need a cooler ASAP, but a cooler. What I do is this, and I normally will do this on smaller hogs, okay? Anywhere from, you know, 30, 40 pounds or less. You can do it on bigger hogs. It's the same principle. I'm going to tell you this quickly. You need a good sharp knife to do this. Roll that hog back up where it is, uh, you know, laying down but on its feet. So it is in the normal Mm -hmm. position of a standing hog. Take your knife. And go right down the top of that backbone and just just slit that skin going right down the backbone. All right. And you'd actually be surprised with a sharp knife. That skin should slit much easier than you think that it would. Mm -hmm. Okay. if you get that once you get that knife underneath there, uh, if you've got a knife with a gut hook, uh, that works great. As long as it's good and sharp, you can get it in there. And you again, you're going to go right down all the way from the tail, all the way up to the top of its shoulder. Then you want to go up there to the shoulder blades and, you know, take where you, you've got that slit and you want to cut down towards the ground. Just go about, you know, six inches or so. Then you can do kind of the same thing on the rear end. So now what you've done is you've, uh, you, and, and you can start pulling that skin back. It's This is not hard to do with this hog laying on the ground. The skin actually peels off of uh, this, you know, back part really easy. And, and you'll just peel that back. And you don't have to go all the way down the ribs or anything. All you're trying to do is expose that back strap. Mm-hmm. And it's just laying right there. And if you know how to butcher a deer, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once that back strap is exposed, you can cut that thing out in a New York oh, minute. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not, not going to tell you how to do it. You know how to cut a back strap. Super simple, super easy. Do the same thing on the other side. All you're trying to do is just get yourself that much room to work with where you've just rolled that, that skin back and you cut that back strap out. All right, that's super easy. Yeah. Now, if you want a little more meat, what I do is I will go back now. That hog is, is, I've already got my slit. I've already gone down to the tail. And I will just take and uh, I will start um, cutting that. I'll just kind of take that knife and follow that ham down on the front side of its leg, pulling that that you know skin back. And I'll kind of, you know, pull it off. Then I'll go the same thing there on that, that hind rump and I'll cut that skin back. And now this is butchering. Mm. This is not for pretty. This is not, but I can get in there and I can get three quarters of that rump roast, that ham off, just down and dirty, cutting it while that hog is laying there on the ground. Mm. And then once you get this first side done, it doesn't matter anymore. You flip him over and you can peel that back and do the other side. I know it sounds difficult, but remember, this is all you're trying to do is get something so that you, you know, if you don't want to waste it, you're getting that something. If, if you want a perfect ham coming off here or you want this thing quartered, take him back to the house, hang him up, do that. 
Uh, but this is a down and dirty quick way that I've done many times laying there mm-hmm. in the field. And I'm talking about you can do this in once you've done it a couple of times, you can do it in three to five minutes. Oh, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you one last thing. You want to know how to really do this? Go to YouTube and search for hog zombies. Hog zombies. That is our good buddy, Glenn Guess. And Glenn has a video, and I'm going to find this here. I got it right here. I'm going to tell you the name of it. Uh, I pulled it up while ago. How to dress a hog in 10 minutes or less. And I'm pretty sure this is the video. Glenn goes out there. I, I hope this is the video. Glenn goes out and he shows you how to literally dress this thing, leaving the skin on, which is this phenomenal thing. I've never seen anybody do this. Glenn makes this look like child's play. He has obviously done it hundreds and hundreds of times, and it is a great video if you want to know how to do this and get more of the meat while in the field, you know, taking it with you without having to haul the whole, the whole Man. hog in. I'm going to check but, that out. I'm, yeah, go, I haven't seen go, it. Yet. It's a, it's a cool video. Yeah. I actually found that video. A several, it's like four or five years old. I think I found that before uh, we'd even become friends with Glenn. And it is a really, really cool video. So go check that out. Hey, since we're talking about YouTube, I want to give one more. I was about to say, we this. forgot and he's going to, He's going to hate us for it, but I for, we forgot. No, about it's, it was on my list. It was on my list. <laughs> yeah. So I want to give another shout out here before we're done. Uh, Chester Cup. He is a retired U.S. Army colonel. He is uh, pro staff for Outdoor Legacy. He and his son, uh, Douglas Graham, they are over in Georgia. And these guys are some of the most serious hog and coyote hunters that I know. And they do, uh, Doug and Chester do a lot of work for us, uh, helping us do reviews of scopes. Um, Chester does written reviews. So anytime uh, you go over to the blog section at OutdoorLegacyGear.com, there's a lot of blogs there uh, that are very well-written reviews. Those are all by Chester. Uh, He does an amazing job on those. But he's also started a YouTube channel. He started making some videos, uh, doing some reviews of some optics, uh, as well as kind of going over what some of the new optics uh, for, you know, right now are. Like, hey, here's the new scopes or here's the new monoculars. Some really cool videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would highly advise you go check those out. And all you got to do is go to YouTube and search for Chester Cup, C-U-P-P. Mm-hmm. And it is, uh, it's a cool channel. Yeah. Subscribe to it. He's a great guy. He's got a wealth of knowledge. And uh, they're the real deal. Uh, him and Doug do a lot of hunting. They're out shooting all the time. They're reloaders. Uh, they build rifles. These, these guys are, are great guys. So go ch- check out uh, Chester's channel there. You can also go to his, he's got his own blog called theolddeerhunters.com. Uh, It's a great blog, uh, a bunch of reviews and things he's done there. So check them out. We'll give them another shout out. Uh, You know, earlier in the show, I told him I was going to do it and uh, it was on my list here. So I wasn't going to forget, but but go check him out and subscribe to his YouTube channel. I think you'll, they'll find some good content there. And while you're subscribing to that YouTube channel, go over to Outdoor Legacy Gear on YouTube, subscribe to them. Uh, Mr. Jason Robertson, the owner of Outdoor Legacy Gear. If you're interested in any Night vision or thermal optics, as always, please call Outdoor Legacy at 877-350-1818. You can find the website at OutdoorLegacyGear.com, and uh, we would love to earn your business in taking the confusion out of night vision and thermal optics. Uh, You can find Outdoor Legacy on Facebook and also on Instagram at Outdoor Legacy Gear. And you can find me over on YouTube, as I've mentioned uh, previously, Hans ETX, that's H-A-N-S-E-T-X, 130 something videos. I just completed a uh, full review of the IRA Rico 384. I'm about to put out a full review of the uh, both of the Rattler AGM Rattler TS25 and TS35. So you can check that out very soon. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram at Hans ETX. All right, folks, we appreciate y'all coming out and watching and listening this week. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. And for those that don't know, when we say subscribe, it just means go to YouTube, 
click the little subscribe button so you get notifications. It doesn't cost you anything. No membership fees, no dues. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, send us a nickel or a dollar or anything like that. Just subscribe so you don't miss a video. You can always go to the late night vision show dot com to find all the information about the show in the past episodes. Uh, hope you will come back next week. We hope to see y'all then. But between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes. <laughs>